internet world. Today I'm going to do a small demonstration on how to make ammonium hydroxide uh, via chemicals you can pretty much buy anywhere. Um, this is pretty much the same ammonium hydroxide or ammonia aqua solution that you can buy for cleaning at the hardware store and so on. The only difference is it will not have the contamination that that does and you can make it to any concentration you like. What we're going to do is we're going to make it uh, 25 percent or roughly 25 percent but for other experiments like I've done in the past like tetraamine copper two for chlorates and things like that anywhere from 23 to 25 percent is just fine. Uh, we're going to use this drain opener here which is both a mix of potassium and sodium hydroxide in a liquid solution. Um, you can use just potassium or just sodium hydroxide it doesn't matter or you could even get it this way, with like sodium or potassium, and you can actually uh, mix it with your own water and make a solution to drip into the bottom here. We're going to react the, that, that with ammonium chloride that I got from Alpha Chemicals. And what that will do is we'll end up having, it'll free the ammonia, and it'll come through this, into this trap, and then into uh, my graduated cylinder over here. But what it'll do is you'll end up with a byproduct in here because we're using both potassium and sodium hydroxide here, we'll end up with the byproduct of potassium and sodium chloride in here, and the ammonia, like I said, will travel up into our water trap and then be bubbled through distilled water to our desired concentration of ammonium hydroxide. Let me give you a close-up look at this setup here. So we're going to put the uh, Potassium and ammonia and sodium hydroxide on the top here. We're going to and the graduated uh, the addition funnel here, and we're going to slowly drip it into the ammonium chloride, which will, like I said, liberate the ammonia, which will then go up over here and into this water trap. Now it's very important that you have a water trap, okay? Because when this reaction stops, it will try to draw everything back in uh, to the boiling flask. Another thing you want to make sure you do is you see how one of the tubes is sitting down in there further than the other? You want that to be on the side of your graduated cylinder where you're making your ammonium hydroxide. That way, if you do have a suck back, it doesn't end up going all the way back into your boiling flask and crack it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make 25%. And here's my little graduated cylinder. Like I said, it's going to be a very small amount. This is just for demonstration. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make 25%. So we're going to put 18.75 milliliters of distilled water in there. And then we're going to uh, bubble it until we get a total of 25 milliliters overall with the dissolved gas in the solution. Another thing to keep in mind here is it's uh, always better when you're doing something like this with the gases, not always, but generally, to chill where you're trying to dissolve it because it'll help dissolve more into solution and um, it'll stop, stop it from coming out of solution. Normally, if you were, say, putting solids into a liquid, you'd want to heat it to dissolve, but this does not work that way. So, here we go. Here's our setup. The amounts here really don't matter. Um, I'm going to probably use an excess of all. I could figure out the stoichiometry, but it, it's really irrelevant here. Um, there, there are places you can buy ammonium hydroxide of this concentration. And originally when I started doing this, I didn't have um, a place that I could get it. And that's why I originally made it this way. But now I can just buy it. So hold on here. You want to make sure that this is closed so it doesn't just start adding it in. I'm going to get some gloves on. And of course, when <coughs> handling corrosive chemicals, always use eyeglasses. Gloves are kind of optional because, you know, it's, it's not really strong stuff. I mean, if you've got baby skin, you really do want to wear gloves. Fat 
I'm just going to put 125 milliliters in here. As I said before, this is only for demonstration. I really don't need this stuff. I already have some. And uh, watch to the end of the video. I've got kind of a channel update. And, uh, well, I'll tell you at the end of the video. So we get this in here. Another thing we want to be careful of is you really don't want to clip all of these because if you build too much pressure, you don't want to have a failure of your funnels. So what you want to do is you want to leave at least, you want to have these grease to the one leaking. You want to have at least one of these kind of loose. And you really want to have the rest of them clipped. like this that it will damage glassware. So don't use any glassware that you don't want slightly marred. I'm not measuring this. I'm just going to put in uh, a reasonable amount. You can always stop and add more if you need to. Now what I will do is I'll start dripping this in without heat. Okay, and then once uh, the reaction slows or almost stops, I'll turn the heat on to drive the reaction forward. So now we get that in there. Where did I put my stopper? Well, I guess I'll have to grab another scope. Oh. <laughs> Just in a rush. Okay, so I'm going to clip this one. I'm going to leave this loose. Remember, you're going to want to have grease on here so that it doesn't leak. Then over here, we're going to go with the 18.75 mils of distilled water. You gotta grab a new pipe back. See if we've lost the one that was in there. Remember, measure this without your tube in it. And when you go to check to see how much this has come up, you're gonna to wanna to pull the tube out each time because otherwise you're gonna get an inaccurate reading. Use this to top it off where it's going to be. That's 20 more meters, so 19, a teeny bit more. Then you just insert your hose, like I said, this will throw your measurement off. Now, when you really start generating this, it's going to dissolve into here so fast that the bubbles generally won't make it to the surface. So at first, before the, the ammonia actually gets over here, because it's going to get all the air out of the lines, you'll see bubbles that come all the way to the surface. But then as uh, the hydroxy, the ammonia rather, gets there, it'll start going right into solution the second it hits the water. I will move this just a little closer in a minute.
essentially looks like this uh, addition funnel here is having an issue. The addition funnel, yeah. Well, I see what's going on. Um, it's so cool <laughs> that it's causing a vacuum and it's not letting the fluid move. So warm it up with my hands. I'm going to turn this down too. Well, we're going to come back once this starts actually going. What's happening here is, uh, there, it is starting to move now, but what's happening here is the fluid in here is so cold it's causing a vacuum on both sides and it's not allowing it to go through. Okay, there it is. Now it's starting to drip. So I won't turn the camera off yet. I don't know if this camera can see it. This camera, see the dripping? Now this is going to take quite a while for it to flush out these lines, okay? And like I said, you can tell when the uh, ammonia actually gets to the water over here uh, by when the bubbles start to dissolve into it. If the bubbles continue to float all the way to the top and out, that means that you don't have the ammonia there yet. Another way you can tell is you can run the gas over a uh, pH strip. See the bubbling? You don't want it to go too fast. If you go too fast you might pressurize your system and you don't really want that to happen. See how the bubble's going all the way to the surface? We'll come back when the uh, Ammonia actually has gotten to the graduated cylinder here. Okay, I'm generating it a little faster than I wanted to. I could control it tighter, but like I said, this is just for, you know, to show you how it's done. So, I really don't care. Uh, normally, if I wasn't making such a large amount, the bubbles would be like dissolving before they get to the top. Um, in a lot of circumstances, guys will put a funnel upside down in the bottom of the beaker to give it more surface area to dissolve. Quite often what I do is I just use a tall graduated cylinder and it works pretty good. But as you can see, we're making a lot of gas quickly. And uh, just to show you that we, we're making uh, ammonium hydroxide here. Look at the pH on that, huh? So yeah. When we get up to the 25 milliliter mark, uh, I'll come back and do just a few more tests and I'm gonna give the channel update. Still got a ways to go. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention the reason why I use uh, a scissor jack like that is in case your reaction gets going too fast because shutting the heat off won't do it because the mantle will hold a lot of heat. So that way you can literally lower the heat away from your boiling flask. And yeah, this is going pretty fast. Also, you can see, oop, it fell off. You can see that I am leaking um, not a lot, but a considerable amount by, so it's still air in the system. See the darkening of the paper there, the pH paper? That's simply from the gas, the ammonia, that is not dissolving in. So it's not, I'm not losing a lot, there's still a lot of air in the system, but I am losing some. So it's always good to have ventilation. I always forget the small details like that when making a video, or at least lately anyway. We've got almost all the air is purged out now. See how small the bubbles are getting? We've still got a massive amount of generation happening here. See at the bottom, really big bubble. And then it's dissolving so fast. 
works here that it's almost totally going into solution before it reaches the top of the water. And we're having a pretty good gain in uh, volume here. So this reaction is well on its way. And uh, we do still have a little bit escaping, but not much. It's probably what's mixed with the air. I like to see the size of that bubble at the bottom. Really big, and as soon as it comes out of that hose, it's teeny weeny weeny and barely makes its way to the top. Once all the air is completely gone, that bubble will not make it to the top anymore, unless we're generating so much that it's impossible for it to dissolve, which is, you know, that is possible to happen. And we've got our reaction going along quite nicely up here. I've actually stopped dripping in the uh, potassium and sodium hydroxide for now because the heat is running the reaction forward. We're having a really good reaction going from the heat. Those bubbles are getting smaller all the time. Still huge out the bottom, but really teeny as they hit the water. Okay, we're almost up to the concentration we want. The volume's going up, it's at 25. Keep in mind the hose is in there, so it's not quite where we want it yet. See the big bubble come off the bottom, nothing makes it to the top. That means we got all the air purged out. We still have very vigorous reaction in here, so I could still generate a lot more here. Now, you can also see how the litmus strip that I put on the top there has turned dark from the stuff that is uh, evaporating off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pH test. Oops, stand just came undone. I'm going to do a pH test again to show you how much darker the strip gets. And I'm also going to add copper to it and let it react for a minute, and the solution should turn blue. So, first, first let's do the pH test. Oh yeah, it's a really nice deep purple, so we're probably around, you know, it's kind of hard to tell on these strips, the center of it's a dark purple, so we're around, we're around 14, we're between 12 and 14 in that range, hopefully this camera can see that good. We're going to add the copper to it, it may take a minute to turn purple. I mean blue, not purple. Here we go, to get this all in there. So I'm going to let this run for a few more minutes. Uh, we'll come back whenever this actually has turned color because it will take a minute to react. There we go. You can see it's got a blue tint to it. If I leave the copper in there long enough, the thing will turn a brilliant blue, just like in my Tetra Aiming Copper Tube Fluorite video. So this will conclude this video. Uh, the only other thing I can say is it's a lot more accurate when you're trying to get the concentration. Um, whenever you, uh, you do it by weight, not by volume, unless you're using a volumetric flask and you're doing it at a certain temperature. But nothing we're doing here is, is, you know, that touchy, so there's no big deal. Well, anyway, let's talk about the channel. So as many of you know, YouTube hasn't always been friendly to uh, chemistry channels and science channels. Unless you're, of course, liberal. Now, BitChute is a really good place, and I'd appreciate it if everybody would go to BitChute and subscribe there. But the problem with BitChute is, I believe they're running out of money, and they need people to donate to BitChute badly in order for them to stay in business. Okay? So, I mean, still, please stay subscribed here, subscribe. YouTube likes to take my subscribers away. They even did something recently where I couldn't unsubscribe from liberal channels, and they made it for a short time where I couldn't actually subscribe to conservative channels which is messed up. I ended up getting that fixed, but so they say it was a glitch. Um, anyhow, there's another issue going on here. I got a, a troll, okay, that likes to go around causing troubles, and he's probably the reason for uh, my YouTube problems. If you would like to know who this troll is, or at least who I believe it is, uh, I will leave a link in the community section of my channel, 
with a uh, with my uh, Facebook page. Go there, friend me, um, and I will give you the information on this guy if you guys want to uh, say hello. Well, thanks again for watching, and this is the preparation of ammonium hydroxide. Boy, this stuff stinks, let me tell you. Look how nice and blue that's starting to get now. I don't know if the camera can see it. Yeah, there we go. See how blue that is? So, it's good stuff. Make it any concentration you want, and we're actually at exact, we're at one point over our target. If I take this out, we're exactly at our target. So we ended up at 25%. Well, thanks again for watching. I left this running and intentionally removed the heat, even though we still have bubbling here. You see how the uh, hydroxide here is climbing the tube? This is why you have, this is why you use a suck back trap to stop everything from going back into your hot flask. This will, at some point here, will go right up and over and it will drain everything out of here. Sometimes it takes a minute, sometimes it happens so fast you don't have time to react. I, I figured I would show this. Here we go. I will probably add this to the bit shoot channel, but we'll see. This is why you should always use a suck back trap, a water trap, just in case. Most of the time when you're making hydroxides like this, that will go so fast that you won't even have time to react to pull the tube out of the water. I'm kind of surprised it's going this slow. <laughs> Again, I'm letting it do it intentionally, just for demonstration. Actually, I'll probably add this to the YouTube channel, too. But yeah, this is why you should always use a water trap. See how fast that just happened? Boom! Gone! <laughs> well, thanks for watching.